The dynamic fantasy hockey duo is back once again for the Monday episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. All of the news and waiver targets you need, including Connor Bedard, Jack Hughes, Young Stars, Down With Injury, and of course, Monday's bets. Let's get this paper. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. Welcome back inside the lab, everybody, to your daily source for fantasy hockey news. It's the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, and I am privileged to be joined by my esteemed co-host, Mr. Steel Roden, on this side of the microphone. It's your boy, Big Flip Livingstone. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day. Steele and I are here for you Monday through Friday. It's been a little choppy over the holidays, but we're back in full swing, baby. Every single Monday through Friday, you can check us out. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Steel, it feels like it's been a while since you and I have been back together doing this. Shout out to you. Happy New Year. Let's get it, though, because there is a lot to get to. Connor Bedard, Jack Hughes will kick off the episode that way. Of course, our top waiver wire targets, Monday's bets. We got four games. Right over to you, brother. Connor Bedard, if you want to start there, I think we should. What's your take on the hit? I think it's clean, but what's your take on this situation? Yeah, obviously sucks for all fantasy GMs out there and the Chicago Blackhawks, but you can't do anything in this situation because it was a clean hit. And I understand there was a little bit of a size difference between Connor Bedard and Brendan Smith who was coming right down the middle uh, over the offensive blue line. And you got to keep your head up in this league. And they're going to be, th- this is one of the best players and one of the most touted players probably for the next decade and mm. uh, close to maybe two decades for Connor Bedard. So people are already aware of what he's bringing to this organization and into the right. league. So he's got to keep his head up when he's going coast to coast over the offensive blue line. And obviously again, Brendan Smith just caught him, uh, Right, right on the button there. Clean hit. Elbow was down right through the chest. There was obviously a little bit of uh, head contact right there on the chin because of the size difference. But the incidental or the uh, initial contact was chest and elbow was kept down. So clean mm-hmm. check. But obviously, when you're the Chicago Blackhawks and you're a teammate of Connor Bedard, you got to go after him. You got to step right. up for your teammate, your rookie, who's mm-hmm. uh, probably going to win the Calder Trophy. Uh, depending on how soon he can come back and how well he's already been playing. But this is a significant loss for fantasy GMs out there because a lot of them were taking Connor Bedard, especially in keeper leagues. He's probably the first mm. first overall draft pick oh, right yeah. off the board. He's got 15 goals, 18, uh, 18 assists yep. for, 30, uh, for 33 points uh, total on the season. He's been absolutely killing it for the Blackhawks. But right mm. now, uh, you know, the Chicago Blackhawks were already one of the worst teams in the Ugh. NHL. They're yeah. absolutely doomed without him Ooh. now. They are just as bad as the San Jose Sharks, who Ooh. only are three points back of the Blackhawks. They right might now. be worse, actually. They yeah, might, they might be worse. Uh, it's hard to say because the San Jose yeah. Sharks are on another eleven-game losing streak yeah. right now, but they're just as bad without Connor Bedard in the Yeesh. lineup. Looking at the speaking of that lineup, I implore you to go check out Daily Faceoff and have a look at these lines because oh, it's bad. No disrespect to the likes of Isaac Phillips. Brent Saney, Zach Sanford, Reese Johnson. I don't even know who those guys are, Steel. And look, we, you and I should know them. No disrespect, this lineup is not an NHL caliber lineup. No. And look, you and I talk a lot about bets. If you're betting on the Chicago Blackhawks at all while Connor Bedard's out, good for you because you have more cojones than I ever will. This team is bad, bad. I said it last week before Bedard even went out. Now they're doomed as right steel. Nailed that one fantasy-wise. Huge hole to fill. We'll talk about some options around the break, of course. Big-time bets as well. This just sucks for Connor Bedard. It also hurts the NHL. Right ahead of the All-Star game where this league has a hard enough time showcasing its talent, they needed Bedard there. And who knows? Maybe out of some miraculous thing, he can come back in a month. I don't know if that's going to be enough time for him to recover. Keep an eye on his ability to come back and be confident, though. 118 shots already, Steele. Clearly, he is ready for the NHL speed and pace. That's been silenced. Jack Hughes, however. Pace, not a problem for this guy, but staying in the lineup clearly, starting to be a concern. And I'm going to turn this one over to you for obvious reasons, Steele, but there's some people in the fantasy communities 
kudos to them all, that have different approaches to things. Hit me with your take on this. Injuries are something you have to take into account. Is there a way to predict them? Of course not. But there are some players, Patrick Line and others, I'm not saying Jack Hughes is Patrick Line, but Patrick Line is one of those guys that is very obviously fantasy value impacted by injuries. I'm done talking. What's your take on Jack Hughes, who is once again on a fall, looking like he's going to miss some time? Yeah, another superstar in the league who just goes down to injury. And this is something that he's dealt with throughout his entire NHL career, trying to stay healthy and in the lineup for his organization. And again, this was just one of those fluky plays where yeah. there was no contact on him. He was taking the puck over the blue line. It looked like he toe pick tripped a little bit. And it's an undisclosed injury. We don't mm. know exactly what it is. My best guess is it has something to do with his knee or a groin injury, but it's definitely mm. lower body. But this yeah. is a superstar in the league. And obviously yes. there's a, there was a lot of back and forth with Jack Hughes and, uh, you know, Flip and I and with Blake on the podcast about where to take him. And it's just one yep. of those players for me where obviously I – I agree wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly that he is a superstar in this league and he is one of the faces in this league and he's taking over the last couple of years. No mm. question about that. But mm -hmm. you, for me personally, you got to take into consideration the injuries. You go back to, uh, I, what was it? Oh, probably, yeah, definitely over 10 years ago now when Sidney Crosby was going, uh, you know, mm. with his concussions on a yep. regular basis. He was banged you know, up. As a fantasy owner and a fantasy GM, sure. where do you take him in the fantasy draft when you know he goes down to concussion and injuries very easily. He, his draft stock, again, he's still he's still probably one of the best players in the league right now. We're seeing him put on a show for Pittsburgh uh, this entire season so far. But that's yeah. something you got to take in consideration, mm. uh, especially during that time period for Sidney Crosby. For sure, that time goes, period, yeah. Yeah, for that time period. Yeah. And, and he's even, changed his style a little bit, exactly. which maybe that's what Jack Hughes needs to do, perhaps. Exactly, and that's exactly what I'm trying to get towards, too. Yeah. Jack Hughes, again, this was a fluky injury. He was just for skating, sure. and he tripped, and something happened in his lower body and his leg. Mm. So that just happened. That's just one thing you can't have any control over. But right. when you're drafting your team, you got to take into consideration the injury factor for a certain uh, for some of these players uh, when you're drafting them. Jack Hughes, 32 games, 45 points. He has been banged up this year as well, you know, and he's missed six games, six or seven games already. I don't know how long he's going to be out for now, but his skating ability alone is right up there in the elite echelon of the top skaters in the league. Obviously, Connor McDavid in a whole other realm, his ability to push the puck at that pace puts defenders on their heels immediately. And he has that kind of game changing offensive talent. I hope he comes back soon, though, because, you know, yeah. my side of this take. When it comes to who I would rather, can I deny, though, when you and I were talking about JT Miller or Jack Hughes, this season, and JT Miller right at the same time, I'm pretty sure that Jack Hughes was going down, put up another three-point night, and the Vancouver Canucks are on fire. The Devils having some struggles. We're not going down the JT Miller-Jack Hughes angle today, <laughs> Steele, as much as I know you'd probably be down for that. We just need to highlight this because, once again, Fantasy owners out there of Jack Hughes are going to have to get creative. And we know mm -hmm. that that is going to be tricky. I got five targets for y'all around the break. We'll keep it short and tight because I know Steele's got some targets. We got bets to talk about. But, you know, we got to also talk about our friends from Game Time. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. You never want to be stressed out when buying tickets for your favorite event, concerts, theater, comedy, and, of course, sports. Steele and I love the Game Time app for buying tickets to NHL. UFC, even the NFL, I'm right here on the border. Shout out the Bills. Big game. Let's go. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and use code Locked On for 20 bucks off. Download the Game Time app today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Go to go to check out Locked On Sports Day. They've launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. They're here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus the national shows covering every single league. So go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. And again, thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Have a great day out there. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. 
uh, the follow button and leave a five star review. We appreciate all that mm-hmm. love and support. That's Big why time. we do this every Monday with the waiver wire targets, trying mm-hmm. to help you out there with your weekly matchups. Number one on my list, Flip. Yeah. Uh, before we get to a couple of guys that I believe we're sharing or from the yep. same team at least. Mm-hmm. I got to talk about this guy because I mentioned him in the preseason. I mentioned him during sure. the draft as one of those late steal picks. Ooh. Didn't really pan out the first three months, but he's gotten hot over the last stretch of games. I'm intrigued. Jonathan Druin of the Colorado hey. Avalanche rostered at 22% right now on Yahoo. He's mm. up 16% from last week. He's got nine goals, 21 points in 38 games this season. But like I said, he started off real cold. He's been yeah. real hot of lately. He's got seven power play points. The peripherals are mm. pretty insignificant. They're pretty yeah. weak, but they're creeping in the right direction ever. Okay. Uh, nevertheless, three game point streak for Drew Aaron right now with four goals, five points total. He's got 13 points in his last 12 games. So he's really feeling it on that top line now with Nathan McKinnon. Like I said, he's got yeah. history there. And again, like I said, this, you know, in the preseason during the draft time, mm. this probably yeah. wasn't the best suggestion uh, that, you know, one of the best names sure. coming out of my mouth, but he's <laughs> finally starting to find his groove with Colorado right now. I like where his head at, where his head's at. I like his speed right now too. He's really using his feet sure. out there, uh, which I haven't seen from him in the last couple of seasons. So Jonathan yeah. drew and go pick him up. If you need a fill in Nathan McKinnon, anyone playing with Nathan McKinnon and he, yeah. it's available right now, you have to be jumping on it. And, Kudos to you for circling back on this one because, yeah, you were high on Jonathan Drouin, but it made sense. We loved the McKinnon angle. We loved him getting a fresh start on a winner. A lot of things were going his way. And again, perhaps, I, you know I say this a lot, the problem was between the ears for this yeah. kid because the offensive talent is there. Another very weird, my first target, a guy that I talked a lot about <laughs> at draft season that I thought the opportunity, playing on a good team, increased minutes for Morgan Geeky didn't work out doing basically nothing to start the year. And now all of a sudden moving up the lineup, getting to play, I believe right now, let me bring that up because that's what really excited me when I looked at this player, Morgan geeky. And yeah, we are going to share some players uh, in a second, but shout out to his brother. Also centering the top line right now with David Pasternak. How do you like them apples? (laughs) Also on the top power play unit with David Pasternak tease to bets, Morgan geeky also in his last five games, You mean the numbers, two goals, three assists. (laughs) He likes to throw his body around shots on net penalty minutes and the ice time on the rise in a big way. Morgan geeky also available 9% in Yahoo three on ESPN four games for Boston this week, Arizona, St. Louis, the struggling golden Knights and the Colorado avalanche who have been allowing crooked number goals. I'm liking this week for Boston and Morgan geeky. Uh, I really like the fact that you're mentioning Geeky and the Boston Bruins because that actually just reminded me. I probably should have had this player on this list, but I'll just mention him right now. I picked up Trent Frederick, who's been playing Ooh. really great from the Boston Bruins. He was on that top line, had mm. two goals in that 7-3 win against the Tampa Bay Lightning. The peripheral mm. stats are really good. So Trent Frederick could be another guy from the Bruins to keep an mm. eye on uh, to see how much playing time and opportunity he continues to get. But he's been really yeah. great the last seven games. Let's get sure. over to some of the same players from the same team that we've down got here. Dallas Stars. I've got two players from the mm-hmm. same team, and I'll just mm-hmm. rattle them off real quickly because yep. I know you want to talk about one. Sure. Mason Marchment, 26% rostered right now. He's got 13 goals, 30 points on the season. Mm-hmm. Again, another player that started off the year very slow, very sloppy. Only mm-hmm. He had zero points in his first six games but currently on a four-game point streak with nine points in that time. Bang. Really caught fire for the Dallas Stars, even, even so on this three-game losing streak they're on right True. now. Yeah. Uh, but the peripherals are great. 32 penalty minutes. He's a banger league beauty, 76 mm. shots. He's on pace for 65 points, which would be a career high. And again, like I said, he's really caught fire uh, since that since the zero games and uh, zero points in the first six games of the season. So he's continuing to feel his game right now. And the second line of the Dallas Stars – Looks mm, real deadly. There you go. Tyler Sagan, yep. Mason Marchman, Matthew Shane has been getting yep. it done as Rupe Hans and Joe Pavelski struggle a little bit. Again, like I said, on the three-game losing streak. And then real quickly, because I know you are a fan favorite of this player, <laughs> Thomas Harley. I got to mention him after what you said last week and the week, Thank pro- you. Uh, week prior. 31% yep. rostered right now. He's up 11% from last week. And this yes, is huge is. for Thomas Harley because obviously bad news uh, with the good news. Miro Heiskinen is out on a week-to-week basis with a lower body injury, I believe. Thomas Harley, I would Mm. expect, 
to get a lot more opportunity. He's already playing just under 20 minutes of average ice time. But from what I've seen and what he's capable of, I ex- I expect him to be put in a position where Miro mm-hmm. Heiskanen was. He's got nine goals, 10 assists, 57 shots, 68 blocks, 20 hits. And again, uh, why I think he's going to get some opportunity, uh, not right away, but shortly. Mm-hmm. The Stars are trying out a new power play with five forwards on that first unit. If that doesn't go according to plan, yeah. I would expect Harley to be moved up to that first unit in the Heiskanen position. But as of right now, it's uh, the top three line, Rupe Hintz, Joe Pavelski, Jason Robertson, Tyler Sagan, and I believe mm. Jamie Benn on the yes, first sir. power play unit. So yep. if that doesn't go according to plan, Thomas Harley is your number one guy. He'll move, he'll move up to that PP1. You know I love Thomas Harley. Don't need to get into that because you covered it so nicely, <laughs> and I spoke about him, I think, two waiver wire Mondays ago. So we'll keep that tight. Mason Marchment, however, when a guy gets the opportunity that he is getting, and I know Tyler Sagan is an aged player, but he is having a good season. He's Addie Duchesne's good. having a good season. It's a nice balanced line. Yeah. And Mason Marchment was one of those names, Steel fantasy-wise. He was a bit of a darling after that season for Florida. 47 points in 54 games, and everyone was jumping all over Marchment coming into last season, and then he puts up 31 points in his 68 games as a star for his debut. This season starts slow, and now back to what he was almost a point-per-game player in that year for Florida, and that's what he is doing right now, and you have to pay attention. Also, the stars this week, four games, Nashville, Chicago, and Minnesota twice. No disrespect, Steele. That (laughs) team is banged up and not playing great. That's a good week for the Stars to turn it around. Four games. Take a look at Mason Marchment as well. I got one more player, Steele, and I got two mentions. You want to go or should I go? Yeah, well, I guess I'll finish up with my last player yeah, since, give her. You're, since you're dissing my Minnesota Wild. I'm my bad. Well talk about them. Yeah, let's. Uh, that's, where, that's where my last player comes from, and I'll, I'll make it real quick because I don't have a lot to say on it because I talked about the mm. Minnesota Wild a lot on the uh, last episode that I had. But Brock Faber has been absolutely yes. killing it, in my opinion, for yes. the Minnesota Wild with everything that's going on. 24% yep. rostered right now. He had three assists in that 4-3 win over the Columbus Blue Jackets. Two goals, 19 mm. points on the season. The yeah. peripherals are pretty solid for a 22-year-old. 56 shots, 26 hits, 69 blocks. I like what he brings on that PP1 unit, the uh, quarterbacking, the power play. He's a young defenseman who really does the small things that a coach looks for. Mm. Uh, looks for makes the small passes doesn't make uh, no, very noticeable mistakes out there in the defensive zone. Again, mm-hmm. as a young as a young defenseman in this league right now. So I really like his game and where the Minnesota Wild are at right now Ooh. with a few of their younger prospects and yeah. younger players on their team. Yep. I understand they're, you know, they're not a bad team. They're not a great no. team. They're somewhere right in the middle there. And I, I agree. still think they're trying to figure it out. Obviously, they've dealt with a lot of injuries so far this season. Obviously, the new ones to Gustafson and Kaprizov. But mm-hmm. Matt Zuccarello is back in the lineup. Obviously, that, that, that's some great news for the Wild moving forward. But Brock Faber, if you need help on the blue line, just along there with Thomas Harley, those are two great young options for you for your weekly matchups. I absolutely love Brock Faber. I think more people need to be talking about this kid because – not only, and I, you and I talk about this a lot, trying to separate sometimes, yeah. you know, this happened to me, Nick Suzuki. Nick Suzuki is like your prototypical player that you want on your team. Hockey IQ, sense, leadership, all that. That doesn't always translate into fantasy production. So looking at Brock Faber right now, I am excited. I think he is not even close to scratching the surface yet. In my opinion, he's a dark horse for the Calder. Dark horse, but he is going to finish in the top five. He's plus 1,000 right now for the for uh, the Calder as well. In my opinion, Steele, and I think you'll back me up from the preamble you just gave, more people need to pay attention to Brock yeah. Faber because he is going to be a top-pairing defenseman in the NHL for a very long time. Keeper dynasty people, thank me later. Jump on Brock Faber. He might already be a keeper. One more player before the break very quickly, Steele, and then I got two after the break, and I'll keep them even quicker. This is one of your boys, too. Gustav Forsling, very quietly, is one of those defensemen that doesn't always jump off the page, and I don't think he's a draftable defenseman, but he is awesome as a week-to-week fill-in. He is playing on the top pairing with Aaron Ekblad. The Florida Panthers, you want a piece of right now. I'm telling you that much. If you're not buying into Forsling, (laughs) go out there and grab a piece. But points in three straight games. He's got five points in his last five games. Some reason he had 17 penalty minutes the other night. That was a wild one against the Coyotes. Anyway, Gustav Forsling, worth it. He's out there. 50% on ESPN, 60 on Yahoo. Panthers play the St. Louis Blues, the New Jersey Devils, and LA Kings this week. 
I don't hate it. Gustav Forsling, definitely. You need some help on the back end. In addition to Thomas Harley, I'd be looking at Forsling this week. Yeah, he has been killing it recently as well. I have him in one of my leagues. I believe I believe it's the competitive league. I don't want to talk about league. those leagues, Steel, because it's not pretty. We won't talk about it. It has yeah. not been pretty for you and I yeah. uh, so far this That's season. Right. But it's been a lot of fun. Uh, really enjoying it so far. Mm. Uh, our second year doing this with the listeners out there. So thank you so much for all of, all of you supporting us and joining the league this year. We're going to get over to Big Time Bets. Flip has two more players he wants to talk about real mm. quickly before Monday's Big Time Bets. But this episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. The NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in $50 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, which we urge you to do so, there's no better time to get into the action than right now. The app is super safe and easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and of course, the same game parlay, which is frequently on the Big Time Bet segment of this podcast. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Continue to hit the subscribe, leave a follow, and a five-star review. We appreciate all that support you show us Monday through Friday. We're going to get over to big-time bets where the money is made very, very soon. Four games on the Mm. schedule for Monday, but flip Mm. two final players that you got to let everyone out there be aware of to target in their weekly matchups. And they're probably already aware of them because I'm pretty sure you spoke about Martin Jones last week. And I know you spoke about Joey Decord as well. So it's not, I'm not breaking it down because you just need to pay attention to these numbers. Joey Decord is 10, five and eight. I don't know how they have so many overtime losses. Anyway, 10, (laughs) five and eight, two shutouts, nine 22 save percentage. And the Seattle Kraken are playing really good hockey right now. He is up to 67% on Yahoo and up 24% in the last week on ESPN to 40. But cracking this week, Buffalo, Washington, and Columbus. Joey Decord this week, if he's still out there, go get him. And Martin Jones, they play San Jose, Colorado, and the Islanders, and then wrap the week with Detroit. He's going to get probably three of those four. He's up 12% in the last seven as well. Got to mention both of them because if you need a goalie, those are probably my top two fill-ins for this week. Oh, man. I was so disappointed a couple of days ago. Joey Decord in my one ESPN league uh, was there for the takings. He's been mm-hmm. there since he uh, got this, you know, the starting job, mm-hmm. uh, oh, what, over two weeks now. Something like Finally, that, yeah. was like, okay, uh, I'll go pick him up. The day I try to pick him up, somebody else outbids me and snags him from my roster. So I am still stuck with that. Absolute garbage, mm. man. Jonas Corposalo from the Ottawa Senators. He's been killing my team right now, but let's not go down that train once again. Let's get over to big-time bets where the money is made. Mm. Three, four games on the schedule, three picks from both Flip and I. Flip, you start us off. How sure. are you feeling for Monday? Yeah, I'm liking them. Four games, really liking my picks. It's been a bit of an up-and-down past week. Obviously, you and I have been doing episodes every single day, so we're back in the saddle again, baby. And I'm taking a look at the Pittsburgh Penguins on the money line. Penguins are playing the Philadelphia Flyers, and as much as the Flyers have been a good story so far, yeah, they're struggling right now. And when you look into the numbers head-to-head, obviously you know how I feel about Sidney Crosby, but I didn't go there in this one. Pittsburgh 7-1-2 and two in their last 10 against Philly. Combine that with Philly not playing well right now, and that's all I need to hear because you also know I'm buying into this Pittsburgh Penguins club in the second half. They're 8-4 and four over their last 12 games as well, Steele. Hit me with Penguins on the money line. That's my first pick. Yeah, that was a tough one for me to to pinpoint mm. who was going to yeah, win. Sure. That's why I stayed away. I stayed away from the money line, and I went mm. to a player prop for this oh. one. I went with the Travis Konechny anytime goal in this matchup. He's been absolutely killing it for the Flyers, even though they have been struggling to win games. Mm. He's still potting in goals. He's on a three game goal streak right now. Five goals in his last five games, and again, just really feeling it. He's been the top top player for the uh, Philadelphia Flyers the entire season. I know Travis Sanheim was pretty good to start Mm. off the year, but Konechny's been the most consistent player for the Flyers uh, so far. So 
He's been killing it. He's scoring goals. I'm going to take the player prop anytime goal from Travis Connect me mm. uh, for my first pick. Second pick, I'm going to go with the Avalanche on the money line, minus Ooh. 134 for my okay. lock of the night, actually. Oh. This is a little bit of a... Uh, Spicy. This is more of a gut pick of anything okay. because looking at the trend, looking how the Avalanche have been mm. playing of recently, mm. uh, especially against the Boston Bruins of all teams, I believe the Avalanche have, don't have a great record against the Boston Bruins in the last 10 games. I forget what the actual record is. but 6-3-1, uh, and one, actually. Pretty good. They're six, three, and one. I thought it was the opposite. Maybe okay. Never, never mind. Yeah, um, Bob, Colorado's six, three, and one in their last ten against Boston. I misread that then. So everyone, don't quote me on that one. But I'm still <laughs> taking the Avalanche money line at minus one thirty four. They're mm. at home. They're seven, two, and one in the last ten games. Gorgiev hasn't been the greatest. True. In the last ten games, true. Um, they don't really have a backup goaltender to really help him in other in other mm. opportunities. So Gorgiev has been getting a lot of the workload this season, and it seems to be catching up, but. Nevertheless, Avalanche money line minus one thirty four is my lock. Last pick, I'm going mm. wild on the money line at plus one ten. Mark Andre Fleury, still one of the better goaltenders in the league. Maybe not, uh, you know, as big as he once was, but still one of the better goaltenders mm. in the league, in my opinion. Okay. He's playing on one of the best teams there, the Minnesota Wild, obviously. But that's gonna be my final pick. <laughs> wild money line plus one ten. Yeah, I don't know about if I agree with any of those <laughs> takes, Steele. And here we go because we got a side bet that we haven't had in a while. I'm taking the Dallas Stars on the money line as my lock of the night. And I know they haven't played well. I understand they've lost three straight. One of those was to Montreal as well. They were all one goal games. And yeah, they still count yep. as losses. They could have gone either way. Miro Heiskanen and Jake Ottinger from the obvious statement of aside from a couple of forwards. Those are their two most important pieces. Jake Ottinger is nearing a return. So I think as they start to return to health, I know Miro Heiskanen just went out, but Ottinger returning is going to be huge. Anyway, Seven, th seven, one, and two in their last 10 against Minnesota points in nine of 10 games. That's all I really need to hear for that one. That's my lock of the night and perhaps my favorite pick of the night. And I was going to make it my lock because he is just so effing good, Steel. And I hate talking about him because he's a Boston Bruin. But David Pasternak yeah. is an absolute stud. And in 14 career regular season games against the Colorado Avalanche, obviously East Coast, West Coast kind of thing here. They don't play a ton. 14 points in 14 career games, including 10 goals. Pasta, anytime goal, really feeling that one. Didn't get the odd up, but I think he is in for a big game because also you mentioned it. Gorgiev's looked a little bit like Swiss cheese of late, mm -hmm. and I know Colorado's got a good record. They're going to be there. They are allowing a bunch of games. I bet you if you dug into it, they have see allowed a lot of five, six, or seven goal games. That's just far too many if you're going to be a cup contender, which I still think they are. Anyway, Pasta, anytime goal. Let's get it. Yeah, and, and I don't know if you saw that. The uh, I, I believe it was. It's been a week now, but Devin Taves calling out some of his teammates yeah. just for the lackluster yep. play. So they haven't been great defensively as well. But neither is Gorgiev in the blue mm. paint. So Colorado has to be a lot better. But I think they'll get that win uh, on Monday night against the Boston Bruins at home. Mm. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Once again, go check out Locked On Sports today on YouTube. They've launched the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel. They're here for you 24 seven, every single day uh, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of locked on plus the national shows covering every single league. So go to locked on sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel. And again, thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode with flip and I have a great day. Good luck with all your bets out there. And we shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace.